Now that we've got color, we can move on to a more a higher level and more interesting uh, application of abstract data types, and that's image processing. Uh, and in this immediately, you're going to be able to write programs to process things like pictures uh, that you take with your cell phone. So we're going to work with an abstract data type that's called a picture. Uh, a picture is a two-dimensional array of pixels. Uh, again, uh, that's, uh, it's defined in terms of its set of values. A set of values is 2D arrays of pixels. Uh, and so that's what we think of a picture as being. Uh, and we're going to have an abstract data type that allows us to write programs that manipulate pictures. Uh, and so values are 2D arrays of colors. Uh, and just uh, to get oriented, uh, we think of this as rows and columns with 0, 0 uh, up at the uh, top left. And uh, so uh, we're going to use uh, two indices uh, to refer to uh, the pixel in, at a particular place. Uh, we have its column uh, and we have its row. Uh, and that's how we're going to refer to uh, individual pixels. It's got a certain width and a certain height. Uh, so uh, just with that orientation, then we can define the operations that we're going to perform uh, on pictures. First one is a constructor. How do we make a new picture? Well, what we're going to do is take a file name uh, as argument, uh, and that file name uh, is going to be an image uh, that uh, comes from your camera. It could be JPEG file uh, or uh, uh, other standard file format. Uh, and then uh, once the constructor has made the image, we can think of it as a two-dimensional array of pixels. Uh, we could also create a, black, a blank one. Uh, and then we can ask uh, for properties of the picture, like its width and its height. Uh, we can ask for the color of a particular pixel, uh, given a column and row, as long as the column uh, index is uh, within the width and the row index is within the height. Uh, and we can also set the color of a pixel to be some other color. Uh, and then the other thing we can do is uh, just display the image uh, in a window, like standard draw. You know, there's also a method in standard draw to display pictures, but this just displays the thing in a window. So those simple operations, uh, again, we don't really care how the picture is represented uh, and how uh, the system gets these jobs done. Uh, we can work with pictures just using these very simple uh, operations. Uh, oh, and also we can save uh, any picture that uh, we've created back out to a file. So uh, here's an example. What we're going to do is write a Java program that will convert an image to uh, grayscale. Uh, so uh, if we take our mandrel, uh, and this image, by the way, is a standard image that's been used for many decades in computer graphics, so that's the one we're using. Uh, if you type Java grayscale uh, and give that file name, then it'll give this black and white version. Uh, uh, interesting computation, so you can make black and white versions of photos that you take on your phone uh, yourself if you want. So how do we do that? It's a very simple program. Uh, we uh, get access to the uh, Java's color module with that import, and then we just write a main that, first of all, uh, it's going to uh, create a new picture. And where's it going to get that picture? The first argument is going to be a file name. Uh, and so the constructor takes that file name, if it's a JPEG file, then it'll use that to create a new picture, which now we can manipulate as an array, a 2D array of colors. And then what we're going to go do is go through, and for every pixel, uh, we're going to get its color. Uh, so we'll go for all columns and for all rows. It's a doubly indexed for loop to look at every possible pixel. We're going to uh, the, uh, our picture is named PIC, or PIC, and so that's stored in a picture object. Uh, with PIC uh, dot get, that means take that object, and then the dot means apply the operation to that object, and the get operation gets the color at the given column and row. So that returns a color, and uh, then that's a, a uh, variable of type color with a capital C. So now we're going to compute with that. And what do we want to do with that? Uh, we want to just uh, go to our luminance library and get the two gray method that we just did that uh, computes the grayscale value. We put that in another color gray. 
And then uh, in our picture, uh, we'll call the set method to change the color uh, of that pixel at that column and row index to that gray value. Uh, and that's it. And uh, when we're done with those for loops, uh, just show the picture and uh, that's it. An extremely simple program to go ahead and compute uh, any color image into a black and white image. Now, uh, let's look at some more uh, examples. Uh, just to warm up to do some more interesting computations, we'll do a little series of pop quizzes. So let's think about what's the effect of this code. Uh, this is a very easy question. Uh, for all the pixels, uh, what we're going to do is take our picture and uh, set uh, the pixel at column and row to what you, the color that you get from getting the pixel from column and row. Well, that one obviously does nothing. It just shows the picture. Uh, but that's a warm-up for let's do something, uh, try to do something more interesting. This one's not so easy. So uh, now what we're trying to do is uh, set the one at column, and rather than row, we do height minus row minus one, so the one at the top becomes the one at the bottom and so forth. Uh, so it uh, looks like we're trying to turn the picture uh, upside down, uh, but it doesn't really work. Uh, it kind of takes the top half and puts it on the bottom half, but then it's already done because it's overriding the same picture. So that's a bug that's worth thinking about. Uh, what we need to do if we want to do this upside down thing is create a totally new picture, and so that's the answer to this question. Uh, we're going to take our source picture, which is the one that we get from uh, uh, the file name uh, in the command line. We're going to get the width and the height of that picture, and then we're going to create another picture, the target picture, and we'll create a blank picture of the same width and height. And then we go through for every pixel and we set the pixel in the target picture. Uh, there we can uh, do the uh, uh, rows upside down uh, to the color that we get from the source picture uh, and then show it so that one actually does make an upside down copy of the image. So, but all, lots of our pixel, pixel processing programs have this same uh, concept of we go through for every pixel and set it to some value. Uh, maybe it's a value that uh, is a function of a uh, value in some source. So uh, this is a classic example, a scaling filter. Uh, and this one uh, is, uh, is useful in lots of contexts. So what we want to do is write a Java program that will scale an image, kind of arbitrarily and independently. So uh, if, if that's my uh, mandrel, then it's a 300 pixel by 300 pixel image. Uh, maybe I want to make it bigger, like 500 by 500. Uh, or maybe I want to squash it, uh, make it 600 by 200. Uh, or maybe I want to make a tiny one, uh, or a long uh, up and down one. Uh, so I want to arbitrarily scale the image, uh, and there's lots of applications where uh, we need to do this. Uh, maybe to get an image to fit in a certain space, and maybe scaling it just by a little bit uh, extra in one dimension or the other just to make it fit, and it wouldn't be noticeable. Uh, so that's anyway our computational challenge, let's scale an image. Uh, now, for example, uh, let's say you had to cut it in half. Uh, so one way to do it is to just downscale by just deleting alternate rows and columns. Uh, so that example, you're going to lose some detail uh, when the picture isn't big enough, but anyway, that's an option. Uh, or you can upscale by doubling, uh, so that's uh, to make a picture twice as big, uh, just replace each pixel with four copies of itself. Uh, and then if you were to do that uh, back and forth, you don't really get quite the same image back. Uh, but that's going to be an issue uh, when we do scaling. Fortunately, our pictures are at high enough resolution that uh, there's maybe not, these effects are maybe uh, less noticeable than you might think. But we want to do this uh, in a systematic, uh, organized way. Uh, and so here's a strategy uh, that uh, will get this, this scaling done. So if we got our source width by height and our target width by height, uh, what we're going to do is uh, just take the ratios of those uh, differences uh, to get ourselves a column and row index. 
Uh, but the key thing to do is to set up the computation that really what we want is we want each target uh, pixel to get have a specific value. And so we're going to do that by uh, scaling from the source, making sure that we get uh, the, uh, a, a defined pixel value for every row and column uh, in the target. And to do that, we just take uh, whatever row index uh, we get uh, by scaling the target row index and whatever column index we get by scaling that uh, and doing the transformation. So it turns out to be a pretty simple program. Uh, so uh, we take as input uh, in the first command argument the file name, which is the picture that we want to scale, uh, and then we take the uh, width and height that we want out of that picture. Uh, so uh, we create a new uh, picture from the file, and that's our source. And we create a blank picture of uh, size uh, w by h, that's our target. And so now what we want to do is for every pixel in the target, uh, we want to figure out where we're going to have to go in the source uh, to uh, get a pixel that's, that's close to where it should be according to the scaling. And so that's what we'll do. We'll get some column and some row in the source. We'll get that color of that pixel uh, and then set our target pixel to that color. Uh, that way we've got a good color for every target pixel. Uh, and then we show it and uh, that uh, takes a little thought, but uh, that's a pretty compact program to get this scaling job done. Uh, and works fine uh, for our mandrel. Uh, this one is, uh, is worth studying, but it's indicative of uh, the uh, ability that we have with image processing to really do quite a bit uh, with our images. All we need to do is make sure that we set every pixel in the target uh, to some color. Uh, and people have studied lots and lots of different transformations that we can perform on pictures. Uh, and you can, you'll have, uh, I think, uh, some fun doing this with pictures uh, that you've taken from uh, your cell phone. So you can separate out the RGB colors. Uh, that's a thing called a swirl filter. Uh, that's a wave filter, uh, glass filter. Uh, all these types of transformations are actually not so difficult computationally. So all kinds of effects like this, and you can see how to do them on your own pictures uh, in the book site or in the book.